welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence, and this week we're talking about the Toxic Avenger. In my community, Duluth, Minnesota, the Toxic Avenger, the musical, is opening today. And I rewatched the original movie in preparation for seeing the play. Now, a few facts about the movie it came out in 1984, it has a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. It had a budget of 300000 and it took in 800000 at the box office. This is a trauma movie. If you are a trauma fan, you'll remember they made a lot of sort of low-budget comedy horrors. And they, this was sort of their big breakthrough. They realized this was sort of their niche in the market. Lloyd Kaufman... Uh, came up with this idea while wa- working on the movie Rocky, and they cast all unknowns, non-actors, and it was a hit. The practical effects in this movie are so incredible, and when you re-watch one of these old horror movies that just uses the old school practical effects, it really makes you appreciate how great they are sometimes, especially in comparison to CGI. This movie is delightful. It's not taking itself too seriously. It has the right tone for this comedy horror. And the story is so funny and so great. I interviewed the director of the local production of The Toxic Avenger, and here's our conversation. So I'm here with Jody Kiava, who is the director of The Toxic Avenger, the musical here at the Duluth Playhouse Underground. Is that the official title? Uh, Yes, that is. That is the title. So I know that the Toxic Avenger is considered a superhero spoof. First of all, when did you see this movie, and do you do you see him as a superhero? <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's really weird. And when I was thinking back on it, when I, and the only reason I ever read this script was I found it sitting in a box on the bottom during the season selection, and I picked it up because oh, that's a that's the title of those movies I used to watch in high school and took it home and read it and it's actually good but yeah I, I I watched them back in high school I had a one friend in specific we had a group of us who would get together at least once a week to watch movies and when it was our turn me and this other friend most people dreaded it because we would pull out stuff like the toxic avenger or uh well, what is the name of those? The Puppet Master films, or the Full Moon films, or the yes. Trauma films, where we would find these really weird Rutger Hauer films, or weird unknown Linda Blair films. Yeah. Yeah, just odd stuff. And high school, high school, that's where I came into contact with all those weird movies. And he is a superhero, although, I, you know, at first that's not really exactly what I thought of it. Okay. Like, because you, you, you look at these movies, and at the time, I think it was more about, uh, they're just going around ripping people apart, right. and, and it's nonsensical. He's killing them by squishing their face with a mop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's definitely not your typical superhero. I wondered if you, are you a superhero fan? I know you love movies. Are you into superheroes at all? I am not. It's, it's really weird. It's something that I, I don't myself choose to go see. Yeah. If somebody invites me to it, I'll go see it with them. But I think I've only seen a handful of superhero movies in the past few years. I went to see Wonder, Wonder Woman because everybody was saying, uh, you know, this is a game-changing movie. Right. Everybody's got to see it. So and my girlfriend, she had went with a bunch of friends, so they went to see it by themselves. So one afternoon, I just kind of wandered in to see it by myself. And I think I went to see those Guardians of the Galaxy movie because my brother said he was going one afternoon. I said, yeah, I'd like to go see a movie. Doesn't matter what it is, uh, let's go see it. So I saw both those. Okay. They're fun. So I feel like this is a superhero spoof, and it's a horror comedy. And since you're not into superheroes, but you're into horror, I feel like this is the perfect play for you to direct uh-huh it uh, yeah it it uh it robert came to see it and robert's the he he's the artistic director for for the underground and he came in and he said boy you you really got the feel of that genre and I, I said well i you know i spent a lot of time with it in my youth and my adulthood and and since we got into it, I've been back watching a lot of those trauma films because you can find a lot of them on Amazon Prime. A lot of them. Yes. In fact, the entire Toxic Avengers series, yes. 
plus a making of a documentary of Toxie 4, Citizen Toxie. Yes. Plus the Toxic Crusaders cartoon. Oh, I didn't realize the, the, the cartoon was available. I was going to ask if you've seen it and mm-hmm. if it's available. It's on Amazon Prime right now. There you go. We're doing a little plug for Amazon. They're not paying us, but you can. I, I wrote down Trauma and Full Moon because these were the movies that I used to rent. You know, these two, the, the movie producers or whatever they called. You know, yeah. the Full Moon, are they the distributors? Yeah, they are distributors because they, they take on a bunch of different contracts for movies and so yeah, we uh, not my local video store didn't have Trauma or Full Moon, but I used to drive you know half an hour into another town where I lived, and I used to rent full movies. I I wrote down a couple of the Tim Thomerson like Trancers and Doll Man movies. Do you remember those? Oh yeah, Doll Man, Doll Man. I remember <laughs> Trancers too, but I more remember Doll Man. Cause Doll Man popped up on Netflix. I think it was not yes, too long ago. Yeah. And then I remember Trauma, too, besides Toxic Avenger. Do you remember Mother's Day and then the Class of Newcomb High? Those are the yeah, ones that I remember. Yeah, Class of Newcomb High. I, what did I just I read something about Class of Newcomb High? Is it that they're remaking it? They're rebooting it? Yeah, I think they are. And because I, I just rewatched that a few years back with all the... Yeah, Newcomb High, that was an interesting one. For a while, I got those confused with rock and roll high school. You oh. know, the, the Ramones music. And <laughs> right. I, now, speaking of horror, what do you remember your first horror movie? Did you grow up in a household where you could watch horror movies freely? Yeah, my parents were surprisingly open about it uh, for being Catholic. And I, I don't know that they paid attention. I mean, I think they were, They would if they had had their pick, I wouldn't have watched so many of them, but it was what I was into. Oh, gosh. The first one, it might have been The Shining. Okay. Yeah. And I had seen it on TV, and I I had to, I was in grade school. I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I, I was pretty young. I remember it was on TV when I was in first grade, and that, that was like the second horror movie I saw. The first was Night of the Living Dead in kindergarten. My dad got it for me on VHS. Oh, yeah? So, yes, my parents encouraged, well, my dad encouraged horror. But The Shining, first grade, you were probably around the same time. Yeah, it's, it, it made an impact. Uh, it, the movie just sits in your head. As an adult, it does. Yeah. Some of that image is like the dog man and the butler. And the, right. Or the, you know, those, those twins and the blood coming out yeah. of the elevator. And I think shortly after that, I saw late night, uh, midnight movies on TV of The Changeling with George C. Scott, which was another really good one. Very cool. Uh, Do you have a favorite horror movie? Like if you had to say this is my favorite or this is the one I always come back to, do you have one? I I think it's The Shining. Oh, yes. I really, I honestly think think it's The Shining. I think it's the perfect horror movie. Uh, Night of the Living Dead is definitely out there. But I, I think if I had to pick one, I think it would be The Shining. It's Excellent. Perfect in every way. I I tend to agree with you. Now, New Jersey. This is they they call this the first ser- superhero from New Jersey as like the tagline. Bruce Springsteen is he from yeah. New Jersey? He's totally from New Jersey. In fact, there were multiple. There are a couple references to him in the music of the show. Oh, good. To okay. him and John Bon Jovi. <laughs> nice. Now, the John Bon Jovi, was it keyboardist, wrote the music? Keyboardist, yeah. Dave Bryan, I believe was his name, uh, one of the original keyboardists, wrote the music for Toxic Avenger okay. Musical. Very cool. Now, before we get more into Toxic Avenger the musical, I want to know, what other horror movie do you think should be turned into a musical? I know there's Evil Dead and Carrie and... Um, Beetlejuice is about to be on Broadway. What do you do? You see any horror movie that should be a musical? Absolutely. Uh, it and I I know it sort of bastardizes the original film, but they already did that by turning it into a franchise. <laughs> a Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh yes. Yeah. Why is there not a comedic musical with Freddy Krueger? Freddy, if <laughs> anything, he is meant to be a. <laughs> A stage right. star, yes. Once that he turned into sense. a comedian, they gave him his own <laughs> TV show. Yeah. And once he started using wacky one-liners, it, oh, yeah. they might as well make a musical out of it. That is the perfect answer. I totally agree with that. All about the movie, again, Toxic Avenger, before we get into the musical. How do you feel? You are, well, I, I think I wrote down, maybe I didn't write down that you're a trained actor. You're not a trained actor. You're, I mean, you're trained, but you're a very accomplished actor. How do you feel about watching the movie with totally untrained non-union actors how does that make you feel <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> well it's 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 really weird and i don't know how i can turn it on and off but if i go see a drama or if i go see a superhero movie it's probably one of my biggest things a superhero movies 
is I have a hard time adjusting to the acting. Okay. And I am very picky about what movies I watch, and I hate everything, <laughs> but you can sit me in front of any horror movie, and I will shut down all my expectations <laughs> and accept what you're giving me. Yes. And I, I don't know what it is about them, yeah. if it's just something that, back to my childhood, it was yeah. what I was into. Right. And, and so it means more to me, because yeah. when I tell people that I'm really into horror movies, after we talk about Raging Bull, <laughs> yeah. you know, they, they were like, uh, I don't know. You know, something I think, when they're earnestly making a horror movie, and, like, and I consider Toxic Avenger, they were making it earnestly, even though it's a spoof. Did you ever see Invasion of the Blood Farmers? I don't think so. That's another one. It's untrained actors, but by God, they were trying to make a good movie. And it's hilarious, but it's... Mm. it's Charming, so I don't know. This is part of that. This is not the one where they buried them with their head sticking no. out of the ground. No. Okay, I think that was like Motel Hell or something. That might be. But yeah, I think non-actors they don't they don't necessarily bother me when it's earnest and it's not. I don't know. Oh, absolutely. It's charming. Yeah. It's kind of like the I don't know Birdemic or the Room or, yeah. or you know things like the Miami Connection, <laughs> yeah. where they're so. I mean, they honestly believe yeah. they're making the yes. greatest movie ever made. And I think that's part of it, is it's it's made with love. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, this movie uh, has was turned into a musical. I saw it, there was another musical in 2004. This one was released in 2008. It must be the one that's better because it's stuck. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite musical number in this show? Oh, boy. Uh, I, think, I think it's... Uh, it's the big one. It's the ballad. Uh, you tore my heart out. Oh. It's probably a good one. And Evan's killing it. I mean, he's killing it. It's it's awesome. And it kind of sits in that balance of you get to the end of it, and the lyrics are so ridiculous, but it's oddly moving in some sort of some sort of weird fashion. Yeah. An interesting thing about the musical is years ago in the early two thousands. I used to do a lot of theater with a guy named Neil Spindler who directed shows, and he was approached by Lloyd Kaufman. Lloyd Kaufman contacted him about writing and adapting a musical to The Toxic Avenger, and he turned it down because he doesn't write music. So so he said, well, I don't know know how to write a musical, so he he passed on it. And I think they tossed it around to a lot of people and said, whoever comes up with the best version wins. Yeah. And they ended up with a pretty good one. That's great. I When I was researching this, first of all, in my rewatch, I was like, this has this is perfect for a musical. It's so over the top. And I, I love musicals. I, not, and I know not everyone does. And not that every musical has to be over the top, but I was like, this lends itself well to that. How does it, how does it differ than the movie? What can people expect? Um, it's, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's a, it's a little higher quality, I think, than the movie. I mean, the movie is... It's a little less offensive. Okay. I mean, uh, it's a little more approachable. <laughs> but, I, I mean, it's still, it may, there's some remarks in it that are, that are, you know, will be met with question. <laughs> uh, and we do tear people's limbs off. I mean, it's, it's not the bloodbath that okay. the original was, but we, it has its moments. Okay. Is there, um, is there any head like as a melon getting squashed by a car? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have that scene okay. in there where they're playing the game. Yeah. I, yeah, I was always sad that they couldn't work that in because it's such a <sighs> such an iconic scene. It is. And, you know, I, I saw Death Race years later. But when I was a kid, my parents would always, like, somebody would be biking on the side of the road and they'd be like, you know, 20 points. And I never knew what that meant. And now I was like, wow, my parents are, that's dark. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Death Race, huh? Yeah. Stallone and, yes. and uh, Carradine. Is yes. That, is it Carradine? Yeah. So, yeah. I, did, you remember Death Race. Did you see it yeah, when you were a kid, to- too? Or? I totally <laughs> did. I totally did. And I hadn't seen it in years. And it was floating around on the other Amazon or Netflix, one of them, and I watched it again, and yeah. it is nonsensical. Yeah. It is is ludicrous, but I, I loved it. Yeah, I haven't watched the reboot of it, but no, me neither. I don't figure it would have that same charm. Toxic Avenger, somebody called it a mask reboot. Did you ever see Mask <laughs> with Cher? Like, oh, with Cher, <laughs> yeah. And Cher, Cher, and uh, was it Eric Roberts? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Actually, we watched it a lot when I was a kid because okay. the VHS was just coming out. Yes. And you'd rent the movie and so you'd try to watch it seven times in a weekend, see how many you could do. 
and my dad was a big share fan. Okay. So we, Do you see that connection then? Toxic I, Avenger and Mask? <laughs> <You're not. laughs> it's a borderline offensive okay. one, I guess. Uh, but I, I guess I guess I see it. I guess I see it. I just had to ask because I, I, you know, I read that. I was like, huh, I wonder. Oh, now, you, I see you have an X Files tattoo yes. on your. Uh, so did you, the sheer postmodern Prometheus. Post Prometheus. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we, you know, it all comes back around. <laughs> I was wondering if you could have taken a role in this show. I know that you're directing it, but is there a part or a scene that you would really love to act in in this in this show? Uh, that song that you tore my heart out. But I don't have the voice that I've okay. you know, I don't have that voice. Um, that that is a good scene. There's uh, some of the stuff between white dude and black dude. Okay. Uh, some of those are some great comic bits that I'd really like to. I mean, because I have the timing. You know, I just I don't know if I have the I don't have the voice. None of these okay. guys. None of these guys or ladies have. They all have better voices than I do. <laughs> so it's just a cast of five, right? Yeah, five people. And they they all play multiple parts. Black dude and white dude play about ten characters each. Okay. Um, Toxie, of course, is Melvin and Toxie. I think the only one who doesn't have to change characters is Sarah, his blind love interest librarian. Yeah. And even uh, the role of Ma Ferd, which is bigger than is in the movie, she's only in... Like a little small scene, I believe it is, in okay. the movie. She has a bigger part in this. And the mayor is now turned to a female, Mayor Babs Bell Goody, instead of Peter Bell Goody. And uh, she plays both of those parts. And there's a scene where they battle each other. Uh, at the end of that first act, yeah, they battle each other. It's a costuming nightmare. Oh, my gosh. Well, I can only imagine. <laughs> I'm really excited to see this. And I tried not to read too much about the musical because I want to be surprised. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Now, I have to ask for animal lovers, will a dog be shot in this play? Not for real, but you know. A, a dog <laughs> won't be shot, but I, I believe a raccoon will get eaten. <laughs> Well, I think we can live with that. A raccoon will get eaten. A cat will fall out of a tree, but Toxie saves it. Okay. So it <laughs> it's all good, animal lovers. You can come to the play. Now, if you're interested in coming, it is August 2nd through the 18th. They're all 7.30 p.m. showtimes, $20 for adults, $18 for students. Now, this part, I think, is amazing. Your sponsor is Hartels and DBJ Disposal. How did that work out? It's perfect. I, yeah, they told me that, and I didn't even know about it. They said, well, you have sponsors. And I said, we have sponsors. How do you get the hell you get a sponsor for Toxic Avenger? And they told me who it was. And I said, well, that that is. That's just perfect. They had never sponsored a show before, ever. They never sponsored anything. And I think somebody just got the bright idea and said, yeah. You want to do this? Um, why not? We're great for them. It's brilliant. It, this is a brilliant... Um, it's going to bring the community together, this musical. That's what it's going to do. <laughs> we'll fix global warming anyway. Yes. Now, my, my final note is that I think, I, as I was re-watching Toxic Adventure, I feel like he is the superhero we need right now in this country or this world. And you were saying there is a monologue that sort of speaks to that at the end of the show? or There really, there really is, where he talks about you know where we have to go to our leaders with, with love and respect and, and convince them to take action to fix the problems with our country and, and the globe and the, all the global warming and the pollution. And when they said, but what if they don't respond? And Toxie says, well, then we got to rip their friggin' heads off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we wake up every morning to a Twitter feed that tells us that Man, it's, you know, I, I don't like to feel that way about people, but boy, it's hard not to, yeah. you know? It's, I think it's going to be great, and I'm so excited to see it. Anything else you want to tell the listeners about The Toxic Avenger, the musical, or any other thoughts? Yeah, I just, you know, I've been watching it for weeks. I've been watching these guys do it for weeks, and I get, I get bored with stuff easy. And they're entertaining, and they don't have any of the props and stuff yet, and the set's not fully done yet. And they're already killing it. And by the time we get on stage in two and a half weeks, I think we're going to have the best show we've seen this year. Oh, I mean, we'll be fighting against Lizzie. <laughs> I, I heard from an inside source that the Lizzie Borden musical is going really, really <laughs> okay. well. Uh, but uh, I sneered at that and said, well, I don't know. Yeah. you got tough competition over there. So I'll see their show. I'll see what they <laughs> yeah. do. And, 
I am, I, what a time to be alive in Duluth mm-hmm. right now. Like two right. horror musicals on stage at the same time. Right. This is this is great. And it's not even a Halloween. I know, right? <laughs> this is perfect. We, I, Jody, I think we are controlling the universe, yeah, and nice. we're taking over. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. <laughs> thank you so much for taking time to talk to Horror Rewind and break a leg. No, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. If you happen to be in the Duluth area, know that the Toxic Avenger is running through the 18th of August, and so you can come and see the play. If you are listening elsewhere, make sure that you check out a production of the Toxic Avenger in your neighborhood, your local theater, and definitely go back and rewatch the original movie. It is delightful. Until next week, horror fans, we'll see you in the horror section. <laughs>